Hey everyone, it's Kirk McLean here, and you're watching Clay's Canucks Commentary. Hey Canucks fans, and welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary Live, presented to you by Van City Experts Real Estate. I am Clay Emo Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks Commentary for Thursday. December the 7th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for Daily Canucks Insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. First and foremost, shout out to everyone who, like Mr. Wilkins, who watched me already for 40 minutes on Game Over Vancouver. So if you were at Game Over Vancouver, and now that you are here as well, give yourself a round of applause a pat on the back, do both at the same time. That this is probably the weirdest thing I've ever done, but thank you to everyone who, um, yeah, who was there at Game Over Vancouver, and you're here for another 40 minutes of me here. So I'll make sure that I simply don't repeat myself, but um, I saw, yeah, I saw everything. Um, I, I've taken your feedback, and these game night live streams will be less about walking through the game in painstaking detail and rather talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and one other thing. Scott, Game Over Vancouver is the show I do. I There's four of us that split the shows, but it's on the SDPN channel, Steve Dangle Podcast Network, SDPN. So you can always check those out. And I always talk about it on this stream when I'm hosting. And I love it. I love it, Ricky, having a Pepsi. I've had a couple already, so now I'm drinking water, but I'll probably have one more Pepsi because I'm going to study after I do the show. And hello, Burned, all the way from Germany. And Kaya, yes, Kaya May, doing some pre-scouting. Not that she was scouting me, but she has the next Game Over show on Saturday after the Canucks host the Carolina Hur Hurricanes. Moderators, do what you need to do to keep this a safe and respectful place. Members, as legends, Hall of Fame and franchise members, thanks for your support. And to everyone else, no matter where you're watching from, whether my beautiful neighborhood of Steveston, Richmond, in the city, lower mainland, province, country, continent, around the world, thank you for being here. You know that I know that you could be watching anyone else, doing anything else, getting ready for work, school, or better, all three. But the fact that you are here with me right now, know how much I always appreciate you, and I never, ever take you for granted. So you can get involved, and you can support me in the following ways. You can subscribe. So you can get active in the chat section and you get notified of my videos whenever I release them almost daily. Like this video. There are 46 of you in here. I love it. It must be a Canucks game night on a win. 46 of you in here. That means we should have at least 20 likes in here. So why don't you like the video? I love watching that number skyrocket right before my eyes. Now it's at 11. That's amazing. Let's get that up to 20. So if you're listening to me right now and you haven't liked the video, hit the like button as we go. Hello, Anula watching all the way from Sweden. You can gift, uh, you can leave a donation and get the donation train rolling out of the station. You can gift a membership, which is a $5 donation and get someone franchise membership. You can also buy your own membership, upgrade your own membership. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, you can rate and review. So I will do a quick, what I liked, what I didn't like, and one other thing. And then what I will do is after that, I will give you some, I got, I, you guys ask questions. I got answers regarding the, the trip, the Vegas trip. And it's, it's even better now, now that I got, I asked some of the hard questions that you asked me. So I will go over, I will go over some of those. And if you saw, I actually released a full five minute video dedicated to the Vegas trip. So um, after this stream, you can watch that one as well if you're planning on going. But I'll, I'll talk about that one more time, and then I will, I will um, do my Mitchell sponsor read, and then I'll turn it over to you for the second half of the stream. I'm not sure Billy's in the chat. I hope Billy made it to the game after winning that amazing best of seven on my live stream last night to win the tickets to tonight's game. So let me talk about what, I, and I like how Jace, uh, Justin, Justin Credible put in the chat what he liked, what he didn't like, and and one other thing. And 
I, I encourage a lot of you to do that just like he did as well. So the Canucks went 2 nothing. Oh, before I get going, before I get going, it's funny. I just summoned his name or I mentioned his name and I summoned him into the chat. Uh, I'm not making him gift donations, but I'm certainly not complaining at all. So let's give some love to Billy C, the winner of last night's last night's contest. So Billy C, in the spirit of giving back, buys a, a membership. So welcome to, <laughs> can I say this without swearing? The Shiznit. I think I know what that means. And I'm not sure if I swore or not. I'm not sure if I need to go to confession now, but the Shiznit, I guess I've said it twice now, is a new franchise member for a month. Welcome, DK, <laughs> to the CCCC, the Clay's Canucks commentary crew. And Billy, thank you for the donation. So let's give Billy some love in the chat. As he gets the donation train going, let's uh, let's give some <laughs> a welcome to DK. And Billy says the game was fun, two nothing, no complaints. Eric, I'm so bummed you missed the contest, fell asleep. But yeah, you could have you could have won. And you're welcome, Billy, for the tickets. Glad you enjoyed the game. So the Canucks win two nothing. Casey DeSmith makes 26 saves. And the Canucks move to back to eight games over 500, and they continue their lo lose, win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, win, alternating losses and wins. Now it's 10 straight games, five losses, five wins. And I'll just say this uh, before I get into what I like, where I didn't like one other thing. The Canucks are eight games over 500. As I explained in my stream in painstaking detail last night, the Canucks got a bit finished basically 12 or 13 games over 500 to make the playoffs 94, 95 points. I don't think we want to settle for just the wild card spot. We want to finish in the top three in the division. Top two would give us home ice advantage, which would be even better. So we're going to need about 100 points to do that. So we got to get to about 15 or 16 games over, even 18 games over 500 if we want to host a home playoff game. So Canucks are in a good spot, though. They are eight games over 500 and just before i get going justin asked are you worried about saturday nah i'm not worried calgary beat carolina edmonton beat carolina we're gonna beat carolina i hope so no scott we only play games on monday nights let's go what i liked casey to smith apparently someone mentioned he's undefeated against minnesota in his career this was his first shutout of the season for the van so obviously the first shutout as a vancouver canuck and he's been fine i think he started seven games if not eight games i'm going to check that right now um i'm going to so casey to smith let's see what he's been up to goalies vancouver casey to smith has played yeah he started eight times and he's five two and one and this is his first shutout wow it's pretty crazy. Uh, Demko has a save percentage of 918. Demko is 917. So they're basically the same. Demko has a goals against a 246. And Casey DeSmith has a goals against of 269. So um, that those are both comparable numbers as well. But I, I love how they they both have the exact same save percentage for sure. Yes, Edmonton hammered Carolina. In fact, Ron Brindamore was was interviewed on one of those bench interviews, and he says, at this rate, we're going to lose 50 to nothing. It was pretty funny, actually. It was pretty funny that, that he said that. Hey, Neil, nice to see you. Thank you for your lengthy message today on, on Facebook. I will get back to you, but thank you for always trying to keep, uh, keep uh, uh, abreast of what's going on in, in the chat. So what I like, Casey DeSmith, 26 saves, and especially in the first period. There, there are times where you say the goalie kept us in and gave us a chance to win. And, and sometimes you just kind of say that because you, you want to give the, your goalie some love. Tonight, Casey DeSmith was the only reason. The Canucks not only escaped the first period tied, they actually escaped the first period up one nothing, even though they got outshot 12-4, to which I'll get to in a second. So Casey DeSmith. Excellent. He looked big, even though he's not the biggest goalie. His rebound control was better, and he never looked out of position. He's a lot more um, – he's more Marc-Andre Fleury than he is Thatcher Demko sometimes. But tonight, he was very, very solid, very efficient with his movement. 
and was very square. I noticed he was just kind of sliding. Uh, I'm not, no, I'm not dancing. I'm not pretending that I'm slow dancing with an invisible person. He was sliding from ba uh, back and forth in his crease and was always lateral. It looked really good. It was never like flailing backwards or over committing. I thought De Smith had a really, really good game. I like Connor Garland's game. Not only did he have that one assist with a beautiful feed to Teddy Bluger for the insurance goal, he also had another beautiful feed to Brock Besser when Besser hit the post on his on his breakaway attempt. He also drew two penalties, and I thought that Connor Garland was quite was quite active um, tonight. And sometimes, sometimes Garland looks busy, but doesn't really do much he but he looks busy kind of like me at work I, I look busy but i don't do that much but tonight he looked busy he was busy and he no I, i'm i'm complimenting him <laughs> kaya and and i thought garland was one of the best canucks players on the ice i also thought hoglander was good once again he was playing with miller and besser even though he didn't get any power play time and Huglander gets obviously the um, the, the game-winning goal as the only goal for the Vancouver Canucks. And um, I, I will say that I, the Canucks uh, did not, they didn't back down. Um, I like that as well. Obviously, you had that late fight with Zadorov and Maroon. Maroon's just a tool now. He's not the best player, but Santa Cup champion, so you got to give him some props. And then the way that um, uh, Joshua fought Middleton in the second period, I thought was, was good as well. So the Canucks certainly went pushed around. They won the hustle stats. I like that too. They had 23 hits to Minnesota 16. They had 22 block shots to Minnesota 11. So on the hustle stats, the Canucks um, played well. They didn't win the expected goals battle, but how can you when you're outshot 26 to 17? So those are some of the things I, I did like the depth scoring as well. All the, all the, um, I guess Bester is obviously a top six guy and Hoglander was a top six guy, but the two, um, Bluger, Joshua, and Garland all combining on that second goal. And I, I, I'll give props to, to Noel Juleson. I he, he wasn't like the best defender of the six of them, but I do like, um, I thought he had a, a solid game. And I know that he gets in the lineup ahead of Mark Friedman because of his, because of his physicality compared to, compared to Friedman. Yeah, the power play was decent. It was two... Uh, two opportunities that they didn't score on, but on one of them, Miller had two glorious chances. It was uh, Petey or Besser cross ice to him and on one timer, Miller got stopped. And then later in that same power play, I believe Miller passed it to Petey and uh, sorry, Petey passed it to Miller and Miller put it off the post. Also Hughes passed, went around the net, passed it to Bluger, Bluger put it on the crossbar and then Garland passed it to Besser in the third and Besser put it off the post. So if you count those two posts and crossbar as potential goals or goals, the Canucks could have won for nothing. Or five nothing, and and it would have been a lot. Um, yeah, can you imagine they they won five nothing on on seventeen shots? That would not look good for Gustafson's save percentage for sure. And the Canucks did kill off the one penalty that Minnesota had. So overall, uh, it wasn't a perfect game because I'm going to get to some things I didn't like. But overall, it was a good win. It was a uh, uh, a decent win against uh, uh, not such a great team. Although they have good players. In Zuccarello, in Kaprizov, you know, I, I really like Brock Faber's game. I, I noticed him a lot tonight. He had the puck on a stick a lot. I like Boldy. Erickson X, a bit of a jerk, but they have they have decent players. They're not amazing. Kaprizov's having a bit of a slow year. And then, yeah, Brock Faber had 26, um, 26 minutes of ice time for the Minnesota Wild. So those are some things that I did like. Hey, happy early birthday, Martin. 21 air ball. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. What are some things that I didn't like? Well, let's start with the horrible start by the Vancouver Canucks. They did not get credited with a shot attempt until 10 or 11 minutes in the game. Their first shot on goal wasn't until 11 or 12 minutes in the game. And I even said to my family, so Sean was at the game, but me, Jake, Kayla, and Gail were all watching at home. And I even said to them, watch, the people in Rogers Arena are going to cheer Oh yeah, that's a good point, Scott. I want I, I want to mention that, um, yeah, that this was the the first loss for Minnesota's new coach John Hines. They were four zero coming into it, so I'm really glad that they won. That they, they kind of snapped it. So I said to my family, "You watch the the Rogers Arena faithful are going to clap sarcastically and cheer sarcastically once we actually get a shot on goal." And sure enough, I can't even remember who shot it, 
it might have been Mikheyev, but we got a shot on goal and everyone in the arena clapped and then everyone in our house clapped. Aaron, I'm not sure is the old rope a dope strategy is more dope than rope, but I hear what you're saying. And then for the Canucks to escape out of that first period, actually up one nothing, that's some Houdini stuff. For, so yes, I agree with Justin and many of you in the chat. I did not like our first period. You know, the Canucks were all shot 10 to 3 in the third period, but I didn't feel it didn't feel like they were dominated, honestly, in the third period at all. Um, I thought it was back and forth. I thought it was, the game certainly got more entertaining as it went on. So I didn't like that. Uh, is there anything else I didn't like? Oh, by the way, I like the way the Zadorov charged the net. I was I kind of made a joke about it on Game Over Vancouver, but the fact he was charging the net. Outskating Besser and Miller, and what not expecting a pass, just wanting to create havoc and and be a distraction for Gustafson. And of course, he's a distraction. He's a six foot six Russian player, giant mammoth man skating at you full speed. So I thought that's another thing I liked was Zadorov's effort on the first goal. Yeah, there wasn't anything that I didn't like. There weren't any egregious giveaways by the Canucks. Um, you know, I know guys like Miller and PD. And Hughes were held off the score sheet, but um, not a big concern. Sometimes you're going to win some of these low-scoring games. I know a couple of you are asking me if I'm worried about the Canucks' lack of goal scoring. It's kind of dried up over the past few games. And I'm just kind of looking. Yeah, we we well, no, you can't say that. We scored five goals last game, and we scored four in the game before that. So I'm going to take it back. No, I'm not worried about the Canucks' goal scoring at all. So truly. Truly, the only thing that the, the biggest thing that I disliked was was the the Canucks first period because it was bad. There was a lot to dislike there, so that maybe that counts for three or four things because we we didn't get our first shot and goal, like I said, until twelve minutes in. But I thought individually, the players played okay and they had a lot of effort. After Rick Talkett basically called out their their effort. One other thing. One other thing. I'm not sure where this Andre Kuzmenko um, saga is going to go. because, And I spent some time on Game Over, so I'll try not to repeat myself. But I, I find this very fascinating because on Tuesday night, no, on Wednesday night, so last night, I, I might have mentioned this on my stream last night, although I was too excited to run the contest and to tell you about the Vegas trip. Yeah, no, I did tell you about this. I talked to, to my two hockey friends, the ones that were my hockey captains for my roller hockey team, the Holy Rollers, because we're a bunch of church guys, get it? The Holy Rollers. And they were both saying there was they weren't high on signing Kuzmenko to that two-year, $11 million contract because they already saw some writing on the wall last year that maybe, that maybe Kuzmenko is not Rick Tockett's type of player. So Kuzmenko has been benched twice like healthy scratch he got demoted last game to play only three shifts in the third period on the fourth line and then today he started the game on the fourth line so rick talkett you guys remember on tuesday night he basically said i don't want to answer any questions i don't want to talk about kuzmenko he's got to start for checking then today uh talk was a bit more charitable saying you know, not just Kuzmenko, but he's one of them. He's got to be faster on the forecheck because when you're not fast on the forecheck as the lead guy, then your two other forwards, your F2 and your F3, kind of hesitating and not sure where they're supposed to go. So he kind of laid the gauntlet down. And Kuzmenko, to his credit, said, "Yes, I will. I can. I understand. I will work harder. I will. I will forecheck. I will do all of those things." So he said the right things, but then you look at Kuzmenko's stat line, and I get it. I get he was on the fourth line. But he was on the first power play unit, so he had about three to three and a half minutes of power play time tonight because that first unit basically stayed on the whole time. And zero goals, zero assists, zero points, even, zero penalty minutes, zero hits, zero shots. So if you think to get engaged in the game, you throw at least a hit, or and you don't have to rock someone, but at least pin someone. Get a shot on net. You're, I know you're not the first option on the power play. You're probably option number five, but you should still try and get a shot on, uh, and if you can. Like, don't just blindly shoot and, and get it blocked. So I, I find it fascinating that in a, in a game where he was kind of called out and challenged, he only got 12 minutes of ice time. But remember, three and a half minutes was on the power play. So he only got seven, eight minutes or so, eight and a half minutes of, of regular 
even strength ice time, but he had no shots on goal and he had no hits. So I agree with Kempner said in the, in the chat, he does need to score. So I guess I'll end off this one other thing by saying that the fascinating thing is, is he going to get a chance to get back on the top line with Pedersen and Mikheyev? Because I, as I mentioned on Game Over, Lafferty is good. He works hard, but he doesn't create a lot for PD, even though he's fast and creates space. He's still got to get the puck to PD. And Lafferty is not, I, I counted two or three times, say we're offensive zone stall because Lafferty made a bad pass or a bad cycle or whatever. I'm not being harsh on him. I, I'm just saying that I think PD needs more skilled players to play with him. So th that would harken to Kuzminka going back there, or even as someone mentioned on Game Over Vancouver, it was, um, did maybe, does Connor Garland earn a spot up there? So that's kind of fascinating storyline to watch as well. So there's what I liked. There's what I didn't like. There's one other thing. Um, I will get to some of your questions and your comments um, in a couple of minutes. But before that, for that, and before we do a Mitchell sponsor read, I want to tell you very uh, more now about this Vegas trip. So I did a full five minute vlog on it. You can watch that later. And I explain exactly what the $999 gets you. So remember, Vancouver versus Vegas with Uniglo Uniglobe Carefree travel. Crazy P's going. I'm going. Some of my family members are going. We go down on March 31st. We go down on March 31st. And oh, good. I can use all these banners that I made for my, for my vlog. So we go down on March 31st and come back on April 3rd. And the actual game is on Tuesday night, April the 2nd. Now, the cost based on double occupancy is $999. And I did some research. A couple of you asked me, you know, um, to explain what the difference is between double occupancy and single occupancy. And now I can gladly explain that difference to you right here and right now. See, with single occupancy, it's more expensive because a single um, basically bears the whole cost of, of the hotel. So I think single occupancy, if I'm not mistaken, is $250 more. Actually, I should check that real quick before I, uh, so I say the right thing. But I believe single occupancy is $250 more. So that basically means they are bearing the entire, entire cost of the hotel. Double occupancy is... Oh, yeah, here it is. Yes. Okay. I can explain it to you very well now. Single occupancy is $1,250. Double uh, occupancy is $1,000. So that $250 is basically picture they, they value the hotel room at $500 Canadian for the three nights. If there's one of you going and you're the only one in the room, you have to pay that whole $500. So let's presume that the flight and the, the tickets for the game are cost $750. $750 plus $5. There's your $1,250. However, if you are sharing a room with someone, you still have to pay the $750, your flight and your game ticket. But now you split that $500 of hotel into two people, $250 each. So $750 plus $250 is $1,000. So that's why double occupancy is $999 or $1,000, where single occupancy is $1,250. So let's presume that you're doing double occupancy because you're bringing someone or you're, you're rooming with someone. That gets you amazing stuff. It gets you return airfare to and from Vegas. It gets you the airport transfers from the Vegas airport to our hotel. Three nights at the hotel, which is the Park MGM. And of course, the game ticket in the mezzanine level. Um, that I added that up. That to me is easily fourteen or $1,500 of value. We're getting it for $1,000. If you want to go, contact Neil Chark, Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca. Neil Chark, Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca. Mention my name because he wants to track where he's getting all the sales from. So make sure that you you heard about this, this trip through Canuck Clay. That's me. And then here's the cool thing. The other question you guys asked was, is it due everything next Tuesday? No. Only the $200 deposit, $200 deposit is due on December 12th. Full payment is not due until January 31st. January 31st. So you have a full seven weeks to make that full payment. You can budget it for the new year, but right now it is $200 um, to, to reserve your spot. And then you don't have to pay the rest until the end of January. So, so many good things about this. I hope you'll consider going. And if, like I said, if you do want to go right to Neil at Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca, he will hook you up and please mention that um, that you heard it from me. So I hope all of that makes sense. Let's go to my Mitchell sponsor read. 
Shout out to my primary sponsor, Van City Experts Real Estate. Contact Jason Luminous team for all of your real estate needs. Shout out to my secondary sponsor, Perform and Transform Personal Training Weight Loss. You can check them out at ptform.com. Thank you to Gassy Jet Art, maker of that fine artwork. Thank you to Monkey Nine Brewing, my eternal sponsor. And thank you to Vessi Footwear. Use the link tinyurl.com slash Vessi Clay. Receive a free pair of socks off your next purchase of Vessi shoes. If you're looking for Canucks tickets, make sure you email me, canuckclay at gmail.com. And as I met, this is my last show of the week because it's Thursday. I don't stream on Fridays and Saturdays. And like I said, if you're interested in this Vegas trip, make sure you write to Neil, Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca. Mid show reminder to all of you to subscribe so you can get active in the chat section. Bean Child, it's $1,000 per person based on double occupancy. So if you bring a second person, they also have to pay $1,000. That's why I was explaining that whole that whole uh, split of the hotel. So it's $1,000 per person. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. There are 90, 85 of you in here, which is awesome. So this gets those likes up. You can leave a donation or you can gift a membership like Billy did. Thank you, Billy. And you can buy your own membership, upgrade your own membership. And if you're listening on a podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. And yes, Scott says, we're only at 27 likes. Let's get up to 40. And Jason, I agree with you. Even if you break everything down, even at, at, at 12, 1250 is still a really good deal because you think the flight's going to be anywhere between six and 700 bucks. The ticket's going to be about 200 bucks. I'm talking about Canadian. So now you're at eight to 900 and the hotel. Exactly. Um, the hotel is probably like, uh, I looked it up. It's 189 American. So that's about 250 Canadian. So it's a 750 hotel that he must've got a deal on as well. So I think you're saving a few hundred bucks, even on the single occupancy. Friends for the last bit, let's go to your, questions and comments uh, I, I i'll read some comments as well if we don't get enough questions you can tell me what you liked what you didn't like and one other thing but i will definitely highlight the questions for sure for sure fangirl says late to the game why still complaining about kuzmenko i'm glad fiddler was great that's awesome uh people are complaining about kuzmenko because he was ineffective again today and you think uh it's tricky. You got to balance the fact that he was on the fourth line. So he's not going to get as many opportunities, but he got power play one time and he didn't do, he wasn't, uh, he didn't factor into the game tonight. So I'm not sure how many free passes he's going to get. That's why, that's why I don't know. People are complaining about him, but they, um, I know for one, I, I think he, he was okay, but he needs to be better than okay. Do I think Kuzi uh, talk is ruining Kuzi's confidence? Well, I think he's affecting it. Ruining it is a tough word. Cause I, I think, they're all grown men. They're making a lot of money. I think it it, um, it behooves, I love that word, it behooves Kuzmenko to work himself out of this rut. Yes, Trev, I am going to the Canes game on Saturday. And yes, Amrit, I am going to, I am going to the next three. I'm going to Carolina on Saturday, Tampa on Tuesday, and Florida on Thursday. Hoping Kuzmenko finds his game soon. Fun seeing him spin around. That's true. He did that that one play, and that showed a lot of confidence where he tried to spin off a defender four times. That was pretty cool. If you had to play, uh, if you had a player to trade for, who would that be? Well, Scott, my unrealistic would be Kel McCarr. My realistic, um, I don't know if it's a trade or maybe it's a signing of Ethan Bear. Hey, Harry, I'm doing good. Hope you're as well as well. Great effort from the Canucks. I agree. Uh, no, well, I don't agree. The first period wasn't great. The, the last 40 minutes was fine. Yeah, I agree with you. Oh, you're going to... Yes, I know you're going to be there. That was part of your package. So, Trev, let's meet up for sure that night. It'd be nice to, to meet each other. That'd be great. Kuzi was decent, but still invisible. Yeah, that, that's fair. He, I wouldn't say invisible, but yeah, he, he was just okay. I thought the power play was okay. They had two chances, and they looked dangerous. Um, you know, I, I think they're going to break themselves out of it. They're... They're at least moving the puck more. They're not as stationary, which is good. That's why Miller had chances back to back, one from the right side, one from the left side. Thoughts on the two fight? The not much of a fight. The Joshua Middleton one wasn't much, and the Zadorov and Maroon one was even less. That was just Maroon trying to say, um, I'm mad about the way this game went. Tell Zadorov to have a good old Russian heart to heart with Kuzi. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 
No, I did not buy the Luongo Ring of Honor hoodie, Angus. Apparently, the Canucks might not be the favorite to get Bear per Dalua. Oh, I did not know that. Clay, do you see Edmonton passing us? Not yet. I see them um, being the one team to worry about, though, between them, Calgary, and Seattle, but I don't see them passing us. I, I As good as Edmonton's playing, I would hope that we don't fall off the cliff enough for them to pass us, for sure. Who broke the glass? I don't know. Yeah, that was a long 10-minute delay. I joked around that um, the the rink crew fixing the glass got more ice time than Kuzmenko did in the last game. Being chowed out, likely not going to the Sharks game on the 23rd. Um, still trying to sell those tickets. Yeah, Harry, sometimes they come loose. I didn't have much thought of it. Talking isn't making any unreasonable demands of Kuz. He just wants him to play better and do the things he should be doing. Jason, I'm with you. Tough love, man. Tough love. I'm encouraged that we didn't play well for 60 minutes and still won. Yeah. You think we'll win on Saturday? Yeah. They, we we got to break this. I got to get my 4-2 prediction, most importantly. And then we got to break this lose-win um, cycle for sure. I do think we'll win on Saturday. Wow, a rare stream where I've caught up and I'm not just doing questions. I'm doing all comments. That doesn't mean type in more. Uh, it means uh, tell me, give me your thoughtful thoughts on tonight's game or a thoughtful question as well. Versus a red hot team, I felt a trap style game was needed to slow the wild down. They were coming in for nothing, uh, four straight wins. I'm not sure if we did our best in trapping them, Edmund, but it was definitely a low event game for sure. For sure. Harry says so far the Jets, Flames, and Oilers have beaten Carolina. What do you think? What do you think the score will be for the Canucks on Saturday? 4-2 Vancouver. What do you think of Luongo's Ring of Honor game against Florida to finish off a homestand? Yeah, well, even before they announced it at the Ring of Honor game, many people, including myself, predicted it. As soon as we saw the schedule, we knew that the next time Florida was coming in, it would be that game. So I think it's going to be nice. I think it's going to be, of course, it's going to open up the debate next week. Should he be Jersey retirement versus Ring of Honor? If it's Jersey retirement, what do you do about Kurt McLean? I don't worry about that kind of stuff. Let's just honor Roberto for what he did. And if it's ring of honor, it's ring of honor. This is a good question, fangirl. I could, uh, you could write the hot hand and go back to the Smith and, and have Demko. Um, hopefully Demko would understand. You could try and get Demko back in so he doesn't sit too long. Or, or maybe you go Demko Saturday. Although there's another, you know, you could play DeSmith actually on Saturday and that gives Demko almost a week long rest because then the Canucks don't play against until Tuesday. That's a good question. You go either way. Once Suda comes back, who is the odd man out? It will be Niels Oman, especially as a center. Yeah, Amrit, he's mostly here because, because Suda is out. Kendrick says, Hurricanes will become a light breeze. I like that. I like that. At season's end, how many points apart do you think the Oilers and Canucks will be? Five or six with the Canucks on top. What are the tickets you have for the 23rd? I might know someone to be interested in them. Yeah, I actually have all four of my sets. So I still have my lowers and I still have three pairs in the uppers, both 316 and 319. Bean Child, have your friend reach out to me, canuckclay at gmail.com. DeSmith has been an excellent backup. I agree for sure. Who do you think will be the biggest threat against Carolina? Are you talking about uh, who from our team or who from their team i'm not sure what your question is saying i i presume you're talking about the carolina hurricanes you know they still have sebastian aho they still uh, sveshnikov is hurt they still have tara vine in uh i'm gonna go with martin and uh, natchez i'll go with natchez as the biggest threat kaya may says retire both mclean and luongo hot take to smith is playing better than demko well today he did for sure rev trev says everyone hit like and subscribe Hard to figure out PD right now. He's effective. Yeah, actually, I thought he was a, he had a decent game, Doug. He was noticeable for sure. Wild threw a lot of pucks on net. Tried to screen in front, but Nux got a bit lucky. The shots hit someone to Smith or went wide. Seems like Demko doesn't have the luck. Yeah, there's definitely um, something to be said about the luck for sure. Hey, James, who deserves an all-star? Not the most. Pedersen, Besser, or Miller? You know, I'm going to go uh, from a point standpoint, it's Miller. From a goal standpoint, it's Besser. And from, 
yeah, I, I don't know if, if PD actually gets gets that love because right now it's Miller with 39 points, Pedersen with 34, and Besser with 31, but Besser has 18 goals. Um, I'm going to say it goes Miller, Besser, PD in that order. Great question. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with DG7 even back in the lineup. He's obviously lost his spot in the top six for now, but um, he can be an effective bottom six player. That's probably where he's more, uh, more he's suited. Yeah, I hope your Uncle Robert gets better. Thanks, Tyler. No, Hughes didn't have... Uh, he was creating in the offensive zone for sure. He was still walking, guys, but no um, majorly good offensive chances. If not for DeSmith, Wild would have at least made it one goal game impossible win, or Demko have done the same. No, I, I think Demko would have done the same today. I'm, I'm certainly not going to say that. The Canucks were going to be worse with Demko. Since Ven was uh, Svench hurting... I don't know, but I know he's not playing right now. When Suda comes back, does he play on which line? I think they'd be reticent to break up that third line, so maybe he plays on the fourth line. I think Bluger and Suda are quite interchangeable, quite frankly. The Finnish Sebastian Aho. The other one plays for Islanders, right? Brock Bester, All-Star. Yeah, Harry, uh, I could see them going with DeSmith or Demko. Is Hughes a lock for the All-Star game? Absolutely, yes. If PD hasn't signed yet, I wouldn't put PD forward to the All-Star game. Bull representing Pacific was cringe enough. <laughs> yeah, but he's still a Canuck uh, PD at the at the All-Star break. No no news about our injured players, Carol. They didn't mention them today. I feel like Jules and Myers were pretty good tonight, used their bodies. Yep, they are fine. They are fine. And I always say that Juleson is in there over Friedman because of Juleson's physicality the swedish aho i gotta be careful i say that is on the islanders thank you kaya amir says the canucks need to add another top six winger i think so i think their priorities are another d a right shot d and then a top six winger i agree all right friends well, let's go for two or three more minutes so get your last questions in right now you can also give me your score predictions for canucks and the hurricanes on actually no let's do this let's do this we've done a lot of canucks talk tonight for the last oh why did i say ticket giveaway in the no wonder there's no ticket giveaway that was last night come on clay be better be better are the canucks cup contenders no they're playoff contenders but i'm not sure they're cup contenders just yet at the start of the year i was going to offer pd 12.5 times eight I think I'm offering them 11 to 11 and a half times five or six now. I think PD might have a, a lower body injury or upper body injury, just not his wrist. 4 2 Canucks. Kaya May once again asking if anyone's good at statistics. Good luck, Kaya. 2 1 Canucks, 7 2 Canucks. Yes, LA Women's Hoops, the, East, the road trip starts on Easter Sunday. It does. Harry says 5 2 Canucks. Uh, Irwin, we talked about this a few times. No, the orc, uh, the flying skate will not become a permanent primary. Okay, last five minutes. I'm going to declare no more Canucks or hockey related questions. I'm going to do exactly five minutes of Ask Me Anything starting right now. You can keep doing your score predictions until I get my first Ask Me Anything question. For two Canes, 2-1 two for either team, 2-1 Canucks. Sinclair is awesome. Great to see your game. Yeah. Yeah. Indigo. I, once in a while, I will get uh, a complaint that I spoil the result, but if that's the case, then, then, uh, um, I don't know. Turn, I don't, should I say turn off notifications or just try and ignore, I guess it's, it's nice that my videos show up for you. So I apologize for that, <laughs> but thank you for not being mean. Some people get really mad at me. Three, two Canucks. PD should sign eight times 10 and a half. Uh, I think it'll be more than that. 3-1 Vancouver, 5-3. All right, here we go. Ask me anything. What are the chances that I'll bump into you in Vegas? I don't know, Harry. It depends if we're in the same place. And wait, um, is this, are we going on the same trip? Or are you going, are you going for the, uh, my voice just cracked like I was 10 years old. When are you going down there? Are you down there at the exact same time as my trip? This trip? Or I thought you were going earlier. I have been to the Hockey Hall of Fame twice now, most recently last year when Jacob was bowling in in Ontario. Favorite song? Uh, I can't remember them. I watched the show so long ago. 
But I just remember tradition. That's all I remember, fangirl. Thank you for asking. My Achilles is healing very well. I got 10,000 steps for the first time yesterday since August the 12th, since my injury. So first time in four months that I could walk 10,000 steps. There's no pain, which I'm so grateful for. It's just a tad weak. I have not watched Godzilla minus one. Yeah, um, I, I know how they're doing, I think, Scott. But yeah, I, not uh, my cup of tea, to be honest with you. The most popular pizza place in St. Louis is Emo Pizza. Nice. Nice. Emo Pizza. I'm going to check that out if I ever get to St. Louis. Yeah, Harry, I won't be there. Then I think you're going for March. I'm going in April. So I won't. I, the chances of me running to Vegas are zero. What dates are you going in March, Harry? I'll be in March. Because I'll be there March 30. I fly in on March 31st. Will I be gambling in Vegas? If I do play, I don't play slots because I, I can't stand any game where I don't have any control over the over the um, outcome. I play poker at home. I'm decent at it, but I, I don't like playing in casino. I like playing with guys, people I know. Maybe because if I win, well, no. If I win, I feel bad. I'm taking my friend's money. If I lose, at least it's going to them. But I, I do play blackjack, so I might play a bit of that for sure, whether on machine or live table. Favorite Christmas song, This Christmas by Donny Hathaway. Great question. Harry, probably a bit of shopping if Gail goes down, a bit of sightseeing, uh, maybe a show or two. And uh, if it's warm enough, just lounging by the pool. Best bowler in the family is definitely Jacob. Definitely Jacob. Because he's the he's the national champ, and he's the Team Canada member. Sean is second, and then I think Kayla and I are about the same right now. Kayla should be better than me if she practices more, um, but I haven't bowled in, in four months. But it's definitely Jacob. Next movie, not sure, Fangirl. I I, uh, I have not. I don't keep track of uh, cinema movies. Why? At the games, they always say, oh, say, can you see? Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you asking why they sing the national anthem for the, the States? Or are you asking if they're saying, Jose, can you see? I don't know. Is there a guy named Jose there? Favorite lunch spot in Richmond? It used to be Matsuyama before they stopped doing lunch. Uh, I don't actually eat lunch in Richmond a lot because I'm I'm working uh, no, I'll eat Matsuyama on the weekends because during the week, I don't eat lunch in Richmond because I'm at work. So I'll say Matsuyama, Japanese food, for the weekends. Favorite Christmas movie? Sadly, I don't have one. I'm not a very festive guy, so maybe I should get on that. The Buffet at the Wind. Thank you, Doug. Good advice. Um, I like the Hockey Hall of Fame because uh, I went with Jake, Kayla, and Gail for the first time, so they they enjoy the interactive things for sure. Oh, Harry, so I probably won't see you then because I'm – Arriving the day that you leave. On an emo pizza, just ham and pineapple. Sorry, guys. Maybe mushrooms, onions. I know how to count cards. I'm just not very good at it. So not good enough to actually give me any type of advantage. Uh, Erwin saying, don't you don't get kicked out for using your elite math. Yeah, my elite math that failed my counting exams. St. Louis pizza is nasty. Okay, that's good to know for sure. Yeah, I might see Harry at the airport. You know, KT, I thought there would be a bigger discrepancy in the size of my calves. I definitely thought that my leg was going to atrophy, but my leg was so swollen, actually, because of my injury that my left leg looked bigger than my right leg. Obviously, it's because of the swelling. The swelling has gone down now. So, yes, I do see a big difference. Maybe uh, if you're lucky, I'll post a picture of my legs over the weekend. I'm not if you're lucky. I'm just joking. But, yes, now my left leg is smaller for sure. Titanic Museum. Thank you, Kaya. Okay, friends, I'm going to wrap up here because it is 11.45. And I must admit, uh, I hopefully th this isn't too much uh, information, TMI. I have a bit of stomachache, actually. I think uh, I ate something bad for dinner. So I will need to um, take care of myself that way. <laughs> and then also, Kaya feels my pain. I still have to upload the Game Over um, show as a podcast, which only takes about five to 10 minutes, but still adds a bit of work at the end of my night. So thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for being on all my shows this week, including game over earlier today. 
and and my uh, the the contest live stream last night. Shout out to the moderators for keeping us a safe space. Thank you to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang for their support, Hall of Fame and franchise members as well. And thanks to all of you for watching, for liking, and subscribing. Billy, thank you for the gift of membership that went to DK. I appreciate you. That was very generous of you. And thanks to all of you for, for hanging out with me tonight. So on your way out, subscribe, like the video, leave a donation, upgrade your membership, gift a membership, or buy your own membership. If you're listening on podcast platform, make sure you rate and review. Thank you to my sponsors, Vancey Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. And don't forget, if you want me to send you my Canucks ticket list, email me at canucksclay at gmail.com. And if you want to go on this show, on this trip to Vegas, contact Neil Chark, Neil C at uniglobecarefree.ca. Guys, you guys are awesome. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. What did the horse say? after it tripped and fell down help i've fallen and i can't giddy up god bless and go canucks go booyah